This is Viterbi Voices, your chance to hear stories about research, classes, student life, and more. Directly from our students, faculty, and other members of our engineering community. All right here at the USC Viterbi School of Engineering. Welcome back into Viterbi Voices, a special faculty roundtable edition. I am one of your hosts. My name is Paula Desma, Director of Undergraduate Admission at the USC Viterbi School of Engineering. And my name is Audrey Roberts. I'm a senior studying mechanical engineering here at USC. Well, Audrey, uh, this is the first episode in a bunch of different bonus episodes that are all featuring our faculty. Um, we are in this big push so over the next couple of weeks. We're going to see a lot of different episodes related to the different academic programs in the Viterbi School of Engineering. This first one is all about the computer science department. In the computer science department, we have three faculty join me for a hour long discussion about computer science at USC. Uh, and it's, it's led by the, the, the chair of, our, of the department, Dr. Cyrus Shahabi, Dr. Andrew Goodney, Dr. G.J. Halfond, and Dr. Sati Raghavachara. Uh, fantastic stuff going over everything related to computer science, all the different disciplines. And we had opportunities to take live qu questions from our live audience that we're watching. Um, we had about 600 people actually attend this in person, which was great. We've had over a thousand views if you've watched this video on YouTube. But now we got a version for your ears in the podcast. Podcast. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this episode, which is a all-faculty discussion related to computer science at the USC Viterbi School of Engineering. Thank you, everybody, for joining us, and welcome to the USC Viterbi School of Engineering Admission Faculty Roundtable. My name is Paula Desma. I am the Director of Undergraduate Admission at the USC Viterbi School of Engineering. Today, we're doing our faculty roundtable with, with faculty from the computer science department. And so we have a number of people joining us. Uh, we have a large group in our webinar. So there's a number of you in our Zoom webinar right now. Hello to all of you. We're also simulcasting live on YouTube and you all have been chat a chatty group. I can see you all out there asking all your questions. Uh, what I'd like you to do is, is sit tight for the time being and watch for a little bit. Let's 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 settle down on the questions for a little bit over there on the YouTube channel. Uh, what we're gonna do first is we're gonna have all of our faculty introduce themselves, then we're gonna dive into some questions. The ground rules for today are, uh, I'd like you to kind of sit through and understand a little bit more about our faculty and about our department, about their academic disciplines in computer science at the USC Viterbi School of Engineering. Uh, I'm gonna have some questions that, are, that I'm gonna be hosting and kind of letting the faculty know, and we're gonna be chatting about this all, all together. And then towards the latter half of the session, I'm gonna open it up to Q&A, and at that point, you all can start asking your questions. As you start asking your questions, when I allow that time to happen, uh, then we'll start moderating and we'll get to as many questions as we as we humanly can. But without further ado, let's have some introductions happen. Uh, let's first go with uh, let's go with the chair of the department, Dr. Shahabi. Hi everyone. I'm Cyrus Cyrus Shahabi. I'm a professor of computer science and currently the chair of the department, as uh, you heard, and. Uh, what else I should say? I, I've been at USC for a for a very long time, and um, uh, my my research background, if you're interested, is uh, data science and uh, AI. Thank you, Dr. Shahabi. Uh, let's go to Dr. Raghavachari. Hi, everybody. So I'm Sati Raghavachari, and I'm a newly minted associate professor in computer science. Congratulations. And, uh, thank you. So I've been teaching at USC since about 2004. And I teach three types of courses. One is about computer graphics animation, and then also courses about data. And the third would be introductory computer science. Programming is basically the fundamentals of the field and so forth. Fantastic, thank you. Uh, and Dr. Halfond. Hello, my name is uh, William Halfond, and I'm an associate professor in computer science, also the associate chair for undergraduate affairs and teaching faculty affairs. And uh, my areas of interest are software engineering. So many of you will encounter me in 310 in your junior year. And then I also teach graduate level courses on software testing and program analysis. Thank you so much. And last but not least, Dr. Goodney. Hi, uh, I'm Andrew Goodney. Um, <clears throat> I'm a senior lecturer in the department. Um, I teach predominantly the intro classes, um, but I also teach a upper division uh, computer systems class as well. Generally, my uh, research has been in computer networking. 
All right. Thank you once again. And once again, my name is Paul, Director of Undergraduate Admission. I'll be moderating today's discussion. And thank you again for joining us. Once again, please hold your questions for the time being. I will allow questions toward the latter half of our session and we'll get to it uh, toward the end. Okay. Um, but what we want to do today is get to know more about the department. And as I said, hold your questions. Abby, you weren't listening. You posted a question. <laughs> Abby, we're deducting 10 points from your application right off the bat. Okay. So uh, anyone asking more questions, we're just, we're just cutting points from your application right off the bat. So just we're keeping track right away as a heads up. Um, I'm, I'm kidding, by the way, we, we're not going to do that, but I am keeping track. Um, <laughs> let's, let's talk about computer science. Uh, computer science, uh, let's, it's a discipline. It is a lot of different undergraduate degree programs, a lot of areas of study between that. It is broad. It is diverse. Um, Dr. Shahabi, could you start us off and let us know, um, it, kind of a simple question, but a difficult one to answer. What the heck is computer science? Yeah, that, that is a difficult question. So, uh, and I thought Andrew was going to answer that. But sure. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I forgot. That's okay. Uh, so computer science, I guess, uh, is, is the field of, first of all, learning about the um, information technology and computer in general. Uh, and that includes both the computer software and the hardware. Uh, but recently, it kind of become broader as computers are being used in so many applications. So it's also getting, um, I guess, general education and literacy in data and computation. Uh, so uh, given the important role that data have these days in, in so many applications, it's basically becoming kind of its own uh, entity as well. So computation and data uh, literacy, I would say, if I want to quickly summarize it. That's that's great. Do we have, do we have any other uh, ideas of people who want to jump in and add to that? Yeah, I'll just add to what Cyrus said. So it's almost like a fourth form of literacy that we need for people to have in the world. Computer science is one of those. So the first three are reading, writing, and arithmetic, the three R's. But now the fourth R would be reasoning. So if you want to practically do anything in the world these days, it involves computation one way or the other using software data, like Sarah's mentioned. So we think it's as fundamental as like reading and writing really. Okay. Uh, and given that it, it is kind of this necessary fourth literacy, um, why should someone choose to pursue it as an undergraduate degree program rather than just brush up on some knowledge related to it? Andy, I'm gonna have you jump in on this one. Um, it teaches you how to, sorry, somebody's making an appearance here. She was getting in the way a minute ago. Um, so that's why I kept looking down. She was like, she's getting into stuff in my office. And so she's gonna sit with me for a while until I have a chance to yell at the kids and have them come come pick her up. Um, but the, uh, it, it computer science as a discipline uh, teaches you a lot about, um, I guess, logical thinking and problem solving how to understand information, how to uh, process that information. Um, and you can really think of a computer science undergraduate degree as setting you up for jobs in fields as diverse as medicine, as finance, um, you know, nearly any type of research that's done these days um, across all disciplines requires help from computer scientists to understand the data that we're generating um, there's all these stats online about the amount of information that's generated every day uh, just from uh, you know, the fact that the internet and and everything we do is tracked and logged um, you know being able to exist in a world where there's that much information that needs understanding computer science is the way to to uh, to get that understanding fantastic um, now, the other thing I want to discuss before we kind of get into the, the curriculum, uh, and this is really for anyone, um, what do you think the, the differences between someone studying, let's say, a computer programming course in high school or an online course in programming versus actually going into a computer science degree program? Sometimes students are, we have usually two types of prospective students. One that feel like they're so prepared, they may think that they don't even, there's nothing they can learn in a computer science degree. And then there's other students in our audience that are worried because they have no experience in programming. So how do we address both of these, these ideas? Um, maybe I'll, I'll address the, how we handle the, the programming side of that. Um, you know, we have a series of courses that teach programming. And we have different ways into that series of courses. Um, and so we can 
um, you know, assess your skill set and your background, and then find the right classes for you to take uh, so that um, the programming skills you're learning are appropriate to your background. But then at the end of it, after everybody has done uh, the course sequence, um, we kind of like to think you're all uh, at one, you know, very high level in, in programming, uh, regardless of where you came from with your background. You can start with nothing. You could start with, you know, fives on the computer science AP. And, you know, we will, uh, you know, our, our goal is to make sure everybody who comes in, into the computer science program uh, leaves this intro sequence with a really solid understanding of how to program because uh, in the end, I always like to say in my classes that programming is not computer science and computer mm -hmm. science is not programming, but it is a skill we use every day as computer scientists. And we make sure everybody has those skills when they're ready to move on to these other courses um, that are more mathematical based that maybe some of the other faculty could, could address, which is the other side of your coin or your other side of your question, which is even if you're a programmer already, what are you going to learn when you come to study computer science? And uh, Cyrus and GJ, I'm sure, could help us out there. Well, to, to add on to that, um, you know, recently we introduced a new intro sequence because, because in fact, about 30 to 40 percent of the undergraduates who come in don't have a strong computer science background or may not have taken computer science classes in high school. And so we recently introduced a CSI 102, which actually is our, our gateway class into computer science. And undergraduates, uh, they may test or incoming students can test out of this over the summer before they enroll. But by default, everybody goes into 102, covers a lot of the basic programming skills, brings everybody up to speed so they can take on the really tough courses like 103 and 104, which are really the, uh, the core programming skills. So we make sure everybody can hit that basic level of common proficiency before we start the, uh, the, the core classes. That's I also great. want to add that, uh, I mean, one part of the question that whether uh, just learning programming is enough uh, to become a computer scientist. And I, I, I mean, the answer obviously is no. And I think it depends if you want to learn things at the surface or you want to get deep and understand the, the foundation and the art, on what's underlying the, the, the surface. And uh, programming, I, you can think of it as a tool. Uh, so, for example, even the first uh, programming course, you can teach it differently. You can teach it by just focusing on the syntax and semantics of programming, or you can teach it by teaching someone to, to understand how the algorithm work and how they should have this algorithmic thinking of approaching a problem. And I think that's the real difference of just learning programming versus learning computer science. I think you can see this repeated throughout the four years of the undergrad where you learn about, for example, how the software on, on, on computers work, like operating systems or compilers. And these are uh, these foundations that would help you later on to solve uh, challenging problems uh, rather than just having a tool that you don't know how exactly the best way to use. That's great. Sometimes I draw comparisons to, you know, just because you had a wrench or you maybe you fixed one, one part of your car before, that doesn't make you a mechanical engineer. So having a few programming courses under your belt doesn't make you a computer scientist or a computer engineer. Languages come and go, by the way, you know, so right now C++, Java, it's all the rage, Python, but yeah. just now maybe they'll be gone. So if you only know programming, then you're stuck with, you know, having to like migrate to some other language, although you don't have any basics at all also. So in computer science, we teach you behind the scenes about what actually these tools are used for, like Cyrus was mentioning, programming that's, networks. Uh, that's gaming. fantastic, because one, one of the questions I have, because we get this a lot from our students, is what, what, what language do you teach in? And it's not about teaching in languages, that, that they come and go. I often blow some students' mind when I say, you know, most of your faculty have never taken a class in the language they're teaching you. Uh -huh. Because <laughs> it was different at that time, mm -hmm. uh, you know. You guys were we're, we're all back in the cave dwelling days, right? We were doing that in, uh, on on the wall, right, back in the day. Zeros and ones, little switches. Yeah, and and to address the other side, we have a whole suite of classes that are essentially math classes, um, and you know we have a whole series of classes where you will not write one single line of code, um, but yet you can take this class about how algorithms work. Um, from our Turing Award winner, if, if he's teaching that semester. So, um, you know, we really, computer science, like you, you said at the beginning, uh, Paul, is a hugely broad discipline. And an undergraduate degree is going to touch on all of those uh, broad pieces of it and then give you what you need to specialize if you're going to go to grad school or industry. A degree like you get from USC is broad enough that you can do anything 
you know, uh, with that degree when you're done. So that, that's a great segue to my next question. I'm going to, I'm going to combine questions and I'm, I'm sorry, I'm probably going to complicate this a little bit, but I want to talk about the undergraduate degree programs in computer science. We have computer science, computer science, business administration, computer science games, and computer engineering and computer science which is jointly administered from the electrical and computer engineering department. And, and there's a great understanding of the spectrum of hardware versus software at the, at the top level. But can we talk a little bit more about what these degrees do, what the curriculum might be like, what the differences are. And then I, I want to add something at the end of this question, which is buzzwords and hot topics, right? Uh, and this is already happening in the chats a little bit, which is, you know, I want to study AI. How do I do that? I want to study machine learning. How do I do that? I want to study data science. How do I do that? I want to study robotics. How do I do? I want a degree in AI. And, and they don't understand that's not necessarily at the undergraduate level. Uh, so look, that again, very broad question. You know, f feel free to jump in. GJ, do you want to kick us off here? Sure, I'll start with just kind of talking about the, the four different kinds of computer science degrees we have. Um, you know, a lot can be learned about these degrees by knowing who they're in collaboration with. So for example, the computer science degree is within our department. So you're just required to take CSI classes plus you know, other kinds of math and, and, and foundational classes, but it's mainly focused on taking a lot of the, the core computer science classes that are offered by the CS faculty. CCS, as you mentioned, is a joint degree with the, uh, the electrical and computer engineering department. So it tries to do a little bit more of a mix of the electrical engineering style courses, the computer engineering style courses, plus the computer science courses. And so students are getting a little bit of both of those two sides. When you talk about the CSBA, the business CS and the business administration degree, it's a co-degree um, co with the Marshall School of Business. So students' requirements are involved. They take core CS classes, and they're also taking core business classes. And then finally, when you get to the, the CS Games program, it's with the cinema school. So you have students who are taking, the again, the, that, that core set of C, CS classes, but also taking classes in game development or the cinema cinematic aspects of modern game development. So you kind of get a sense just, you know, even just by, by who we partner with for, for these different degrees, what the, the focus is and, and how it's either split or uh, centered on one particular group of courses. Any other thoughts? Yeah, I, I guess maybe uh, about these other uh, subfields of uh, computer science, if I may, like AI or data science. Uh, I would say at the undergrad level, uh, I think there is enough time to build a strong foundation. And uh, we have courses in robotics and AI and so on, but I don't think we should go as far as creating a whole degree, uh, an uh, undergrad degree in AI or an undergrad degree in data science. Uh, I mean, data science is a little different because of, uh, depending how we define it, but if you define it as a subset of CS, I don't see uh, a need yet, at least, to, to define this as a new, new degree program. Uh, but of course, once you enter the graduate degree, for example, a, a master degree, then there are uh, specialized master degree in AI, master degree in data science that we offer at the department. Uh, so that's, I guess, the, the answer to whether there should be a degree at the undergrad level uh, like CS in AI. Absolutely. I think the undergraduate degrees all have opportunities to touch on those areas and people will have them as part of their life. Research areas are involved in this, and that's definitely an advanced discipline as you kind of build on top of your computer science degree and figure out where you're going to be applying that because you need to have a lot of that understanding. Um, but let's talk a little bit about research then. Uh, can, can you, uh, maybe Dr. Uh, Raghavachari, can you tell us a little bit more about uh, some research in the computer science department and where we see computer science going? Yeah, I personally am part of the teaching faculty track, so I won't speak heavily about the kind of research that we do, but I can speak in broad terms and let, I'll let others uh, you know, fill in the blanks. Yeah, we do a little bit of basically, you know, every kind of application that there is in computer science, for example, AI machine learning, it's a whole bunch of stellar people that do, you know, good work there and software engineering, we do research in it as well. And same with computer graphics and, um, you know, even operating systems compilers. So um, anything that can be uh, you know, used as a, anything that computer science can be applied to, there's definitely a research track you know, that is going on in our department. Maybe I can just organize it, what, what uh, Sat just mentioned. So there are, within the department, we have four main areas right now. Uh, area one is basically broadly, you can call it AI, but it includes uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, uh, research in privacy, trust, security. So all of that is under the, the AI ML area. 
the second area is, uh, again, broadly, you can think of it as systems. Uh, that would include databases, uh, networking, software engineering, uh, anything that uh, has to do with the actual computer systems in, in a broad term. The third one is called theory, which is basically the computation theory and all the foundations uh, uh, underlying uh, the computer science. And the fourth area is basically a combination of uh, robotics, computer vision, graphics, and human computer interfaces. So uh, as you can see within these four areas, we pretty much cover, uh, I would say almost all uh, uh, ongoing research in the field. Great. Um, now, there, there, there are a lot, sometimes concerns from students about having to be 100% committed to one of these fields or knowing that they want to do one, one area versus another. <laughs> Uh, and I think everyone should know that flexibility is built into our program. And when it comes to the admission process, I put a, a note in the chat that if you would like to attend an admission uh, event where we talk more specifically about these, please go to that link uh, so we can go, get into it a little bit more. But realize that putting down something on your application, you get admitted to that. You're also admitted to all the rest of our programs in the Viterbi School. So you have flexibility. You don't need to decide right now. Just pick something that sounds cool. Uh, more specifically, there are a lot of questions that have already come in, even though I told people not ask questions, but I'm just giving up now. Uh, <laughs> that said, they're basically wondering like, when, when do I have to choose? Or what's the best choice for me if I wanna do this very specific thing at the end of the road? And, and I know there isn't an answer to that question, but how would you talk to someone when they say, tell me what I'm supposed to major in? <laughs> at least within the computer science major, um, we very deliberately structured the intro sequence for all four of the computer science majors to, to have basically the same four. So at least within computer science, you can proceed mostly through the first year and a half, sometimes two years without having to commit to a specific group uh, because the core classes like 103, 104, 170, uh, 201 are all required across the board. So that, that allows people to keep their options open a little bit longer if they're still trying to figure that out. And, and Paul was trying to speak to this, but um, if you go and look at the general undergraduate engineering curriculum, uh, the Viterbi School is essentially designed to let you change majors within Viterbi without too much disruption to your course schedule. Um, it's one of the reasons why uh, computer science students take Calc 3. Um, besides being a good, uh, just a good discipline to have good, good foundational knowledge in, um, you know, we we want students to be able to come to Viterbi, you might have something in mind, um, but you know, we've all had students who get one semester in and realize that, that, that what they're doing is not what they want to do, they want to do this other engineering discipline. And in some ways, um, you know, I almost think we should let the Viterbi students not even declare. Just come to Viterbi, take your foundational classes, learn about engineering, and then specialize uh, a little bit farther into the program. Yeah. You know, I definitely agree. I don't think it's uh, good to maybe commit too early, so to speak. Instead, take the time, explore what's all out there, and then who knows what you might like or what you might not like. So don't come in with heavy expectations about what to do. It's too early for that, honestly. So just find out what's out there and then pick. You have plenty of time. And, and to clarify, when you do apply, when you put something down in your application, you're not declaring, you're not locking yourself in. You're just telling us what you think sounds cool to you at the time and recognize that, I think, in summary to these, uh, to these answers, Computer science and engineering as a whole uh, is what I would refer to as an experiential process. It's something that you have to kind of go through and you have to absorb, you have to be a part of, you have to decide whether you like it or whether you don't like it or whether it's speaking to you. And that's also, I think, important to understand when understanding kind of these specializations inside the discipline, you know, what you think you're gonna like, computer science, computer science business, or how you start to specialize and shape your degree in, in computer science itself. Do you, do you like, when you're looking at the back end of stuff, you're looking at the front end of stuff, are you much more of a database person? Like these types of elements all come into play. And I think that uh, I wanna pivot this question more towards uh, how do we structure the learning opportunities in the school? What, how, how, what is the, the teaching process like? Can we speak a little bit more about collaboration and talk about uh, our focus on group projects a little bit more? Maybe give some examples of some projects that our students are working on. Sure, I could start by talking about uh, probably one of the, the, the biggest uh, group oriented classes is software engineering. As you know, software engineering, it's, uh, it's a lot more than just programming. Um, it's how you develop software, large scale industrial level software. And this is a, a, a group process. Uh, the, the days of one person you know, by themselves designing these massive systems is, is long past. And so what we really focus on in 310 is 
what are the mechanisms, what are the processes, what are the tools that the, the students um, need to learn to be able to work in a group and to be successful in building and testing these, these very large scale systems. So we consider that experience of going through the, uh, the group work, the, the um, mimicking the kinds of practices that are done in industry as, as part of a really, really important part of teaching students how to become more than just programmers, to, to become software engineers. My classes don't have group projects, so. <laughs> but that's just because they're the intro classes, but. Okay. I know, I know Sati's classes do, often. In my graphics courses, definitely, you know, some of the homeworks are group projects. So students work in groups of three or four. And it's a very interesting experience, you know, because everybody takes on a role and then there's a final presentation. It's a lot of fun and students take a lot of pride in their contributing their part and watching this whole thing come together. It teaches you real world skills because like GJ mentioned, nobody in the real world writes like any large piece of code by themselves. You definitely pretty much have to work in a project. So it's nice to develop those skills while you're still in school. And I have these capstone projects towards the end of your uh, program towards year four, where you basically uh, take whatever you learned over three, four years and combine it in groups uh, into an actual uh, something that comes as close as possible to a software product. I would say. And, and often those capstone projects come from industry contacts. Is that, that's my understanding. Good point. I think in the game field, that's exactly what happens. If you're in the game track, uh, some of the game projects the students work on, they're almost industry level games. So companies like you know Microsoft Electronic Arts Blizzard, they actually come and attend those game demos and sometimes even make offers to students. Those uh, projects are that good. So, you know, it depends on like the track that you're in. Actually, the game one is an uh, interesting example because the capstone game also includes uh, students uh, from cinema school uh, because developing a game is more than just the uh, engineering or the programming aspects of it. It's kind of like a production, like a movie. Uh, so you need the, the, the producer mindset as well as the artistic mindset to be combined with the technology computer science aspect. And that's what the capstone there. Uh, emphasizes on. So let's talk a little bit more about where this is going. You mentioned industry. Um, uh, where do our students end up going after their undergraduate degree? Google, Google. Just, just <laughs> all Google, just all Google. <laughs> we know we go more places than that. What are some of the places that they go to and what are the types of jobs that our students are getting? I think one, one big category is the, the, the main kind of computer science companies, uh, such as Google, Facebook, uh, Amazon, Microsoft. So that, that's, that's the obvious one. Uh, there, there are another category that I've seen. Uh, these are financial companies that I see. They also recruit computer science uh, graduates, like uh, companies like JP Morgan, and uh, that they do some sort of financial analysis. And then uh, another group is in general, uh, any industry that require uh, kind of uh, information technology or data science. Uh, so the main, uh, uh, company, the main company's business is not computer science, but they do need that expertise. So these are different sectors. For example, I've seen oil companies like Chevron and uh, Exxon and so on. They, they hire computer science folks uh, in, in uh, uh, medical, like hospitals and so on, they, they hire computer science folks. So there, these days, actually, there is no uh, shortage of companies who are interested in hiring computer science uh, graduates. We, we also get a lot uh, here in Southern California of defense industry, uh, since that's a big, uh, a big industry here in Southern California. Um, you know, your, your defense industry companies also recruit heavily at USD. Yeah, Logic Park, you know, from in Raytheon. Yeah, yeah. yeah so and the game, game companies also, I forgot to mention. I mean, LA is uh, famous for the game companies because it's kind of the intersection of uh, uh, art coming from Hollywood side and, and technology. So uh, Blizzard, for example, is mm -hmm. one of the companies hiring a lot of our uh, graduates. One, one last question, and then we're going to go to our audience uh, with, with some of their questions. Um, but we, we put something in our poll where we had like, what kind of fun question would you like our faculty to answer? <laughs> we're going to hit this one up now. So if you were not a faculty member, what do you think you'd be doing professionally? Oh, is this, is this in, in light of COVID or not? 
No, you, you answer however you like. <laughs> um, you know, if I weren't uh, faculty, um, I'd be a baker. A baker? Yeah, I'm, that's, and maybe that's related to COVID. I don't know, but that seems really like a, a relaxing, get up early, get your work done, you sell baked goods and you, you're done for the day. I think it would I'll, be good. I'll good follow day. up. What is your uh, signature item on your menu? Oh, my signature, if, if I had a, a you know, my t signature dish or whatever. Yeah. Um, we are going to go with um, some sort of uh, cupcake, maybe. <laughs> cool. Okay. Uh, right. other, other ideas for, for alternate professions in an alternate universe? So I, I, I wanted I wanted to be a movie director. I actually told Ooh. my father that I want to be a movie director, and uh, I, I came uh, basically. I grew up in in uh, uh, a country and in a culture that you either become an engineer or a doctor. Yeah. Uh, so when I brought up the the movie director, my, my my answer was that oh sure you can do that, but what you want to do for actually studying? <laughs> uh, so I said okay yeah fine computer. <laughs> And and what what kind of directors are you are you uh, inspired by? What are some of your favorites? I uh, I, I have actually a couple uh, like Scorsese. I don't know if you know him. Yep. I mean that's uh, personally one, I, I don't know him, but I'm aware uh, of him. Right, and and Woody Allen. Uh, I know he's not the best uh, uh, <laughs> character right now, but I like his movies very much. Okay, DJ Sati. I don't really have a, a glamorous one. Honestly, I, I, computers have been my hobby since I was a little kid. Um, you know, I was like 10, I was teaching myself to do assembly language. And um, so I think really, you know, when I, when I get chances to, to do stuff that's not work, I, I, I'm programming. So I would definitely choose to be a CS programmer in, in, in some major company. Great. Cool. I would uh, study babies all my life. Very young babies, how they learn, how they explore the world how they acquire concepts. I'm just fascinated by that. So wow. child development psychologist, that's what I would be. Wow. There you go. Well, you just beat everybody with that answer. Yeah, <laughs> I know. That's <laughs> oh, babies are fun. That's great. I love that. But so is computers, you know, so is uh, baking and oh. being a movie director. All right. Uh, so we're going to dive into questions. And I've seen a lot of questions. And someone just asked in the YouTube chat, are we going to answer all of them? No. <laughs> it's possible, guys. And I don't know if you've seen how many questions you've been asking, but no. <laughs> we got an hour. We're going to get to as many of these as we can. A lot of them are repetitive, but I will do our best to handle all of these. And if you have further questions, you can email us at vadmit at usc.edu. You can go to one of our admission info sessions, which we put a link. We'll put another link in there for everybody. Uh, Viterbi.live slash events. You can attend one of those sessions where we get to all the questions. We have more time to discuss. We're going to do whatever we can right now to handle these questions related to the faculty. Uh, first thing, there's a lot of questions related to CSBA. And so I want to make sure that we handle that real quickly and understand the differences. And I, I want to give my take on this, and then you all jump in and, and correct me on this one or, or add or take away. Um, a lot of you might be interested in CSBA because you think it's this golden child of a degree program. Like, oh, that's the, that is the, the perfect degree program. It combines computer science and business. I will become a CEO, master of the universe with that degree program. And I just stop, stop you right there and say, that's false. That's not true. Uh, and where people tell you like, oh, you should study computer science and business is usually because they're saying you should get some sort of degree in computer science and likely get a master's degree in business administration. This is not a replacement for that. This is a program that takes the computer science software degree program. It takes away some classes. So you might want to analyze the actual course load and understand the differences between computer science as the bachelor of science degree and the computer science business degree to fit in courses and undergraduate courses from the Marshall School of Business. Sometimes when I talk to those students, they defer to themselves, they refer to themselves as on Mondays and Wednesdays, I'm a business student on Tuesdays and Thursdays and computer science students. So kind of this nice blend. It is one degree. It is not a double major. It is a hybrid degree program. And you get a single degree called Bachelor of Science, Computer Science, Business Administration. It's that if you have an equal interest in undergraduate courses in business, accounting, finance, organizational behavior, uh, marketing, these types of intro level classes that you want to take along with a computer science degree, and that's a nice bridge degree program, I think. But it's not for everybody. But look at the courses because you do lose some courses in programming. 
to add compliments to that, computer science games is the software degree. We're adding game elements and cinema courses and graphics courses into that at the same time, kind of specializes your degree related to game development. Uh, computer science as a whole has lots of flexibility and you can specialize as you go. And then computer engineering, computer science is a balanced kind of a 50-50 split between hardware and software. So jointly, uh, appoint, jointly uh, uh, administered by electrical and computer engineering and computer science. So you are taking ECE courses and computer science courses all along through it. I said CSBA, but I wanted to give all of them out real quick. Yeah. Any, any corrections on those guys? I, I did as fast as I could. Um, I would just add that for CSBA, I think the value that students are finding in it is that if you are thinking of going to one of those companies like Cyrus mentioned, JP Morgan, the big banks, the research or the, uh, the financial institutions, uh, CSBA gives you enough background in the business side that you're not trying to play catch up with the um, the uh, the sort of the language and the operations that you find inside of the business world. So you'll you'll have the same background as your uh, other uh, you know new employees that came from a business degree. You'll understand the business side of it and then have your programming skills on top of it. So I think it just gives you a better foundation if you really wanna go into that part of industry, it gives you the background you need to succeed um, out the door. Whereas if you tried to do one of those jobs with a straight computer science degree, um, it's likely you would still excel, but you're gonna be a little, you're gonna do a little more self-study to learn like what is that acronym? What's EBITDA? What's this? What's that? What do all those business kind of things mean? You're gonna get that uh, with the CSBA program. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> for another question, uh, does the computer science department lean towards theory or practical applications, or is it a mix between the two? The intro sequence is definitely, um, and by design, split. Uh, so the some of the core courses that you take in programming are things like 103 and 104 and then 201. Almost marching in, in parallel with those is 170 and 270, which are a little bit more of the theoretical or the, the math, the computer math oriented courses. And, and even, even 104, where you know we, we say it's programming oriented, you're, you're learning how to develop and uh, do different kinds of abstract computational machines and data structures. What do you hope students in the Viterbi School will take away from their four years at USC? Problem solving confidence. Problem solving confidence. Yeah. Engineering is all about problem solving. It doesn't matter what degree you get. It's, you know, can you, uh, can you be given a problem, figure out the, the steps that are necessary to solve it, come up with a plan, implement it. If it didn't go right, figure out why, circle back and try again. Yeah, we like to think that we like, we, we think we, I guess, teach you guys to think, not just give you some facts and have you graduate, but more like the thinking process is something that will stay with you your whole life. So we like to, you know, think that that's what we prepare students for. Thank you for that. The next question is all related to cybersecurity and computer security. What are the options for students that are interested in pursuing a profession in these fields? Yeah, again, so the, the undergrad program, again, does we don't have a, a specialization necessarily in cybersecurity, but uh, we do have a couple of courses uh, related to that. I think 430 uh, comes to my mind. It's just a, a technical elective, and it does teach uh, network security. Um, so uh, what was the main question? Was it whether... Cyber, well, if someone wants to go into cybersecurity... Yeah, I mean, again, I think that, that definitely you need the foundation first. Uh, I mean, in order to protect the computers, you need to learn how they work. And then on top of that, then of course, you need to learn about the security aspects. So uh, again, computer science uh, general, I think would be the first step. And I'll add on to that. Uh, students regularly going into that field are, are majoring in computer science, and then they pursue a minor in cybersecurity. We have two different minors in cybersecurity, uh, one in forensics and, and one in, in overall security itself. And, and that, that's a nice compliment because it helps you understand the, per, the, the actual computer science, the problem solving aspect of it, but then the actual real life, what does it mean to actually, you know, either go after these, the, 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 these crimes or to prevent them. And so there's, there's two different elements to that as well. Um, let's talk a little bit about the future. Uh, there are numbers of questions that weren't really phrased this way, but this is the overall consensus of this, which is 
where do we see computer science either as a discipline or as a profession going? I'll give you a slightly re different version of that question, which is what do we, um, what are we excited about in the future of computer science or where, what, what changes will be happening that maybe people aren't aware of? I can start with the, with the uh, I guess, one study that uh, National Academies did, and that was a couple of years back, actually. So uh, if, if you uh, remember, computer science did become actually uh, uh, very trendy several years ago <clears throat> during the um, 2008 uh, kind of uh, time frame. Uh, and that was when basically the, the IT companies and the Silicon Valley started and they, they were doing very well. And there were a lot of interest in computer science. There was an enrollment increase, but then it went down again. And uh, the National Academies did a study to basically see whether the current interest that we are seeing in enrollment in computer science is it the same thing and it's going to go up and down again. And actually, the, 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 the answer, the, the result of the study was not, this is not the case. And so far, we, we for the past many years, we haven't seen uh, the, the excitement and the enrollment going down. And I think the reason for that, as we kind of started uh, uh, with, with this, is that it's not just the field itself, but the fact that all the other fields are now kind of relying on, on computer science and using it uh, as, as a, it's basically you, anything you can think of from uh, even law, for example, or journalism and communication, whatever field you can think of, they, they are in need of computation and data literacy. So uh, because of that, we, I, I don't think uh, uh, there's gonna be any, uh, any time soon uh, that the enrollment and the excitement about the field goes down. Uh, and if you think about the major companies uh, that have societal impact these days, uh, they, they might look like a non-computer science company, like for example, Uber and uh, uh, Lyft, for example, they might look like a transportation company, but they are not, they're really computer science company. Or if you think of a company like Amazon, you might think that they are in warehousing and, and selling and so on. They are really just computer science companies. So um, uh, there are a lot of these companies that, uh, uh, on the surface that they may look like a logistics company or something else, but in the background, they're really just computer science. Uh, so it's, it's an exciting field, it's an exciting time to be uh, uh, a computer scientist. Uh, I don't wanna talk too much, but I have some ideas of the future, but I wanna let others also to chime in. Um, my feeling is that there is some uh, reckoning coming with the combination of AI, machine learning, and information privacy. Um, because every day we generate tons of information about ourselves. Every day we buy a new gadget that we put on our wrist that knows where we are, it knows how healthy we are, it knows what we're doing. Um, and, and just the fact that we have that much information out there about each of us as an individual, um, I don't think is being addressed very well. And um, I think there's gonna be a lot of work in the coming decades to, uh, to, to deal with the fact that we live in a very dense information age and that allows us to have the fantastic lifestyle that we do. Um, but it's also, uh, it's also something that needs some, some consideration about what all of that data means to society, who should make money off of it, where should it go, who should control it. Um, you know, it, it's, a, it's, a new, it's a new age as far as information goes. Um, and, I, and I think there's a lot of exciting work to be done in that area. And ethics as well, because with AI, there's yeah, so much yeah. employment going on, right? And so, for example, autonomous weapons. So those are like pretty scary even just to think about that thought. But there are people already doing it. So there's no ethical framework, for example, to basically harness all that and, you know, like put it in a proper framework. So in addition to actual core computer science, there's also going to be extra areas that surround computer science that need to be developed. So it's also a pretty exciting field. Um, and regard of machine learning, I also think that machine learning is actually getting into other computer science fields as well. So that's actually pretty exciting. For example, in computer graphics, where you develop games or you will make a 3D model of something, you would do it the traditional old fashioned way from scratch. But now it turns out that we can actually bring in machine learning to make those things faster as well. In other words, Hollywood, you know, movie making and game industry animation, all that is also being changed by machine learning. So it's really fascinating to see how these fields can start to like merge with each other. That's also, I think, a little part of the future. 
There are a number of questions related to can I study computer science and maybe minor in something else or pursue other degree programs at USC? And I'll, I'll answer quickly, yes, you could do whatever you want. Uh, it always comes down to how much work do you want to do and how long do you want to be there? Uh, and so uh, I saw one student say, so can I major in all four areas of computer science? <laughs> uh, sorry, dude, you ain't going to do that. I'll, t I'll just tell you that right now. Um, and and it, it's just ain't going to work that way. And you wouldn't really get a lot of that. Uh, there, there's a lot of overlap between these areas. So when you think about your ideas, what you want to do in the future and what your passions are, your interests are, recognize that you can combine them in a number of different ways at USC. Let's start first with your degree program as an anchor. And let's understand what it is that you want to do as those areas that we discussed in the, the bachelor's of science and computer science. And if you have other interests at USC, th there's no better place to do that, whether that's dance or film or cinema or uh, cognitive science, the idea of psychology, the idea of political science, uh, art, it's all at USC. And students in computer science are regularly taking coursework outside of that. You could be a little more advanced, take like a sequence of courses that would be a minor. If you want to pursue a second degree on top of your computer science degree, you can do that, but you should plan that that would likely be a five-year program. And that is adding more work onto your, onto your program. And, and if you want to stay at USC and get multiple bachelor's degrees, multiple minors, of course you can, and we will gladly accept tuition checks from you for as long as you want to be enrolled. Um, but I have a feeling you have other ideas of what you want to do. And you'll make those decisions as you go based on your interests, your passions, and more specifically, your return on investment of time and energy. What sounds interesting to you? Uh, but you'll, you, will, you will be doing all those things you want to do. It's a question of depth and, and, and rigor. And I think that's what's important to understand. Andy, you look like you're wanting to jump in. No, I was just saying, you know, you've, you've said it in some of our interviews before. Um, I think you've said it really well. You say something along the lines of nothing's written in stone when you come to USC and there's nothing in your way. So if you want to do something, if you have an idea, can I do X, Y, Z? You go to Paul and his staff uh, and you ask, um, or you go to your department advisor uh, or the Viterbi advisor and you, you ask and you come up with a plan and you can make it happen. No one's gonna say, no, you shouldn't do that. They might ask some pointing questions about why you want to do it and what you're gonna get out of it, but, they're, but it's possible to do nearly anything you want given the resources uh, across the entire university? Uh, I have never said that. However, um, I like it and I'm gonna start saying it and I'm gonna claim that I've always said it from here on out. So and hopefully no one's listening right now, but <laughs> I like that. Um, there's also been questions about internships. And I think that we, we talked about career pl placement and this idea of where students are going. And we put some links into the, the chat here. Um, but uh, that, that's all internships as well. All the companies we talked about, uh, students are interning at those companies. That's how they get the experience. Students are interning at Facebook as early as the summer after their first year. Uh, they're interning at Google, at Amazon, uh, at all these you know quote unquote computer companies. But as, as we talked about before, computer scientists are in demand for internships and full-time placement all throughout their undergraduate career. And some people ask, do I have to get a graduate degree? Uh, the majority of our students are going straight into industry with their undergraduate degree and they're being paid well. Uh, you know, the average salary is somewhere in the 80s, uh, 80s I think it's $85,000 a year uh, on our last survey of graduates. Uh, and that was 24%, 25% higher than the national average, just to give you a heads up of what's what the stats that are people coming out of our department. That doesn't mean that's guaranteed for you, but that's just let you know that our students are doing quite well, they're very prepared, and they, 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 are, um, they, they, they have lots of options. Uh, and, and they're prepared for those, those choices. Uh, the other thing I want to mention real quick is we've gotten some questions about admission to master's degree programs. This is an undergraduate only event. If you have questions, uh, you should go to the graduate admission, uh, Viterbi gradadmission.usc.edu, uh, and you can learn more about them. But this is specifically for our undergraduate programs. Um, as we start to wrap up a little bit more, I should have had uh, another question ready to go. Here it is. Um, can you talk about quantum computing? Uh, and how does that, first of all, what, what is the field like these days? Uh, and how does that work its way into the curriculum, if at all? Well, uh, I, I answered the easy part. So it's not part of the curriculum, uh, at least in undergrad. Actually, even, uh, Honestly, even in our PhD program, I, I'm not aware of any of our faculty working in quantum computing. I know there are faculty, research faculty at uh, ISI, Information Science Institute, and Electrical Engineering Department that are working on quantum computing. Um, uh, now, what is quantum computing? I, I don't know if I'm the right person to, to explain it, but I can explain it the way I understand it, which is basically, uh, 
the, the current computers is based on uh, the Turing machine. And uh, I, I don't know if that, that explanation is even understandable, <laughs> but, but basically the quantum computing allow you to do things in, uh, in, in uh, kind of a large parallel way. So it basically solve problems that's gonna take a long time to solve on, on uh, traditional computers. Next question. Um, with COVID-19 uh, affecting everyone across the country uh, and all the things that have happened over the last six or so months, how have we responded to that and what is the educational experience like uh, today in the Paturvi School and in your coursework? You know, we've had this thing called the Distance Education Network. We call it DAN at USC for almost like 40 years. So we're one of the pioneers in the whole country for distance education. So back then it was all a video link between us and JPL and some defense companies in Los Angeles. So we have in the you know recent times completely capitalized on it and we're still like number one in the country over and over every year, in distance education. So what that means is we've got the infrastructure, the experience, the tools, everything to deliver a pretty good experience. So in a way the COVID-19 situation last spring hardly changed how things were done for some of us meaning like one of my classes for example was pretty much half like you know streamed uh, like students all across the country and so I didn't have to change much at all just kept doing what I did except all of the 100 percent of the students became online that's about it so I would say we actually have a pretty good like I said experience you know for us and the students in how we deliver instruction so I think uh, you know students do appreciate what we do Right. I mean, I can also add to that what, what Saudi mentioned. So one of the, as, as we get back to normal, I think there's going to be this uh, uh, intermediate period where uh, we, we're not going to be fully online and we're not going to be fully in person. We're going to be kind of this middle hybrid that some, some folks going to be online and some folks going to be in person. And uh, uh, teaching classes like that is very difficult if you're using te technologies like Zoom, for example, and so on, because some of your students are going to be in person and some of them online, but uh, our distance education network is designed actually for that scenario. So the, the, the classroom looks like a studio. So it includes all the students. The students can participate in person. And at the same time, the, the remote students can have access. So I think the, 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 our, the then or distance education network become even more important as we get to this uh, uh, hopefully shorter intermediate time where we need to support uh, hybrid classes. One of our last questions as we start to wrap up here, um, there, there's a, a number of these and, and I'm gonna paraphrase them all. So I apologize, it's not verbatim for those of you that have asked this question, but um, what what makes a, a successful student at USC in, in, in computer science or um, what, what do you think is one of the most valuable traits to have as you go through our program? Be passionate, understand computer science because it is magic, it is pure fun. Don't do it just because you're gonna get a great job at the end, you know, that you wanna learn programming, that's not what it's about at all. It is as close as you can come to magic. So if you can appreciate all the amazing ideas behind CS, you know, you really get excited about it, learn it very well for the rest of your life, you'll be all set. I think I would add, take advantage of all the opportunities. You know, we have tons of people, you know, lots of interesting research going on, getting involved with that and getting to know the professors and who are doing that, the, the student organizations that are focused and built around computer science related activities. I think just taking advantage of all these things that are also existing outside of just the, the lectures that you get from professors. I was gonna mention the student uh, activities as well. Um, you know, we have a huge broad set of student activities that let you focus on entrepreneurship or uh, like a kind of a maker sort of uh, environment or uh, game jams. Uh, lots, lots of fun things to do as a computer science student, like, uh, like Sati said. I'll be a little bit more practical. Um, you got to be interested and passionate enough about it to put a lot of time in. It will take time. Sometimes you will spend eight hours or 10 hours or 100 hours on an assignment. And it has to be something that you're willing to put that time into in order to succeed. But if you do put that time into it, like Sati said, you will understand this discipline that 99% of the people on the planet think is pure magic. 
And then my last question, this is the last one that we'll close out with. Uh, and hopefully, you know, any one of you can, can chime in or all of you can chime in as you like. Um, what do you think sets computer science at the USC Viterbi School of Engineering apart from other top ranked engineering programs? Of course, they're all good, but what makes us a little more different, a little more unique, uh, a little more interesting, dare I say, a little better? Other than the fact that we have Andy. I mean, Andy just obviously just makes it, right? I mean, that's that's it. But uh, beyond that, that's the obvious one. All right, Paul, don't make me talk about you freshman year. <laughs> um, I'd say it's access to things like the local industries, game industry, Hollywood defense industry, and um, USC facilities like ISI. It, we just have some really unique... Uh, uh, really unique things here in Los Angeles that USC is tied into, and that gives us uh, that little bit of edge over those other programs. And we have a separate teach, uh, teaching faculty track as well. So I think I need to mention that many big research schools, they you know take teaching as like a secondary thing that research professors do. It means you might not get the high quality education that you think you might get at the undergrad level. But we have a separate you know, bunch of people that are dedicated only to teaching. So I think even that makes us a pretty good program. Maybe I would say a better program than many you know, top schools for that reason. I, I, I had a problem with my microphone. I don't know if you guys can still hear me. Gotcha, you're good. Uh, okay. so, so I think, uh, I mean, I have a slide that basically have a list of stuff. So, and some of it uh, I, I heard already. So uh, the fact that we have a very uh, active research uh, uh, pro uh, program uh, both at the master level and PhD level who actually work with undergrad students. So my lab, for example, uh, we do uh, have undergrad students all the way from freshmen actually uh, participating in our research. So uh, that I think is unique, the hands-on experience that the students get in these research labs by working on various research pro projects. The USC alumni network, uh, I wanna mention that is very important, especially in uh, later on uh, for both internship and, and uh, jobs and then the multidisciplinary research because one, we are one of the few basically uh, universities that we, we are kind of having top schools in different areas. For example, our uh, cinema school is number one, our uh, Annenberg School of Communication and Journalism is number two in nation. Uh, we have medical school, we have policy and we do a lot of multidisciplinary research uh, with these other schools. Uh, the entrepreneurial uh, opportunities that uh, USC provide for, for the students. We have a lot of uh, uh, competitions and, and uh, programs that uh, the students can apply for not only get seed funding for starting a company, but also getting in touch with business uh, students to collaborate and so on. I, I know that we're running out of time, but my list is still going on, but that, that's pretty much it. <laughs> I just had this fantasy of like, uh, we're going to close out. I would let you keep talking and it would like fade to black. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do want to be respectful of our faculty time. Uh, they took time out of their day, out of their busy teaching schedules and, and really kind of connecting with our prospective students. I, I truly appreciate it. Dr. Goodney, Dr. Halfon, Dr. Raghavachari and Dr. Shahabi, the chair of the department. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's been a long time since I've seen any of you in person. I think the last time I saw any of you was actually on another call like this where I was sitting in the exact same chair. Uh, so it's, 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 it's really good to see you. Uh, thank you to all of our guests that joined us. We had hundreds of people in our webinar. We had uh, another 255 people in the YouTube stream and wow. we were trying to bounce between those. So I appreciate all of you attending. Uh, again, a lot of the questions were related to admission. So go to viterbi.live slash events register for one of the admission info sessions. We have first year info sessions and transfer info sessions. There are student live chats that are going on every other uh, Sunday night on various topics. And the application process is all on our website, viterbiadmission.usc.edu. Don't forget to apply by December 1st in order to be considered for merit-based scholarships. Uh, and one note that's been talked about a little bit in the chat, we're test optional. So please stop worrying or thinking about an SAT or an ACT for fall 2021. Do not think about it, do not worry about it. There's no advantage to submitting a score. There's no disadvantage to not submitting a score. Just forget about it. I already have. And trust me, it was the easiest thing to do because I never cared about them anyways. Uh, anyways, so thank you again for everybody. I, will get, I would love to keep you all on to chat real briefly, but once I end it, it's going to say goodbye. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Have a great, great evening. And I wish you all uh, adieu. Bye-bye. Yeah, I love these faculty episodes um, because I think it gives great insight into kind of the, the mission of each different department and really this sort of high level thinking, which I think is um, 
super important going into a major to sort of think about it at that level. I think we tend to get into the nitty gritty, like maybe I like coding in this language or something like that, but there's so much more to, to every department in Viterbi. So I think um, there's a lot to, to learn from these sorts of discussions. Absolutely. So I hope that you enjoyed this episode. And if you want more, we're going to be coming at you more with the rest of our departments. All the different academic departments will be represented. And if you want to watch these on YouTube, you can go to our YouTube channel for Viterbi Admission. That's youtube.com slash Viterbi Admission. Uh, and make sure you get your application in. The application is due December 1st in order to be considered for merit-based scholarships. Go to commonapp.org or go to viterbiadmission.usc.edu. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye.